Hello world, Shelly here, and it's time for your Friday Foundation Fix, where you can get your Fix of Foundation reviews in between Foundation Fests. And today I have got for you NYX Born to Glow Naturally Radiant Foundation. It retails for $10, comes in 45 different shades, of which I've got two. I have Light Ivory, which is like the sixth lightest shade, and I've also got Fair, which is like the third lightest shade. Fair is supposedly a neutral undertone. Light Ivory is supposedly a cool undertone. This is currently getting four out of five stars with over 400 reviews on Ulta's website. 1.01 fluid ounces of product in this little tube. From the description, we can't even. Oh my God. Okay, oh my God, wasn't in there. The NYX Professional Makeup Born to Glow Naturally Radiant Foundation is so glorious. Get it? Available in an inclusive range of 45 truly flattering shades, our covetable formula delivers buildable medium coverage and a naturally radiant finish that lasts. This natural glow foundation tube is the key to creating a truly radiant look, whether you are looking for foundation for dry skin or foundation for oily skin. This liquid foundation blends like a dream with buildable coverage and even works with your skin to help create a smooth, even-toned look. Featuring a vegan formula with no animal-derived ingredients or byproducts, also cruelty-free, PETA-certified. There are just so many superlatives in there. Like, how is a tube the key? It is so not the key. That is so over the top. But anyway, vegan, cruelty-free, bravo. I just read some news article that the OK sign is like a gang sign now or something. I promise you, I am not flashing gang signs. I am just old, and that's how we said OK back in the day. How to use. Apply to a primed, moisturized face with a brush or a sponge. Build. This stuff stays smooth and blends like a dream. That's what they say. Let's check the ingredients. Do we have fragrance in here? Curious, curious fragrance. I don't see any added obvious fragrance. I see like jojoba seed oil. Looks like a primarily dimethicone based bunch of silicones in here. Looks like your pretty typical silicone based foundation. Let's take a look at these two shades swatched against a few others in my collection. Alrighty, let's swatch. The first two swatches here are both the NYX Born to Glow. The first swatch is in shade Fair, and the second is in shade Light Ivory. Third up, I've got the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow in shade 201 Classic Ivory. Fourth is the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Foundation in shade L2 Light. And last, I've got the CYO Life Proof in shade 101. I'm starting out with a 44-year-old face. I have some sun damage that I like to cover up. Foundation likes to settle into my smile lines, my forehead lines. I do have more texture on the side of my face and between my eyebrows. Large pores right around my nose here. I have already primed with the NYX Almost Empty Hydrating Hydra Touch Primer. And I think I am going to use the shade Light Ivory. I actually think both of these shades are too light for me, which is a good problem to have because these are all like the bottom like 10 shades of the 45 so if you are more pale than I am you will probably have good luck with these let's get some of this light ivory so we're going cool undertone today I will use a sponge on one side this is a dampened real techniques miracle complexion sponge the other side I will use a brush this is from believe beauty the new brand at Dollar General and we'll see if there is a better way one way or the other. This is very easy to blend out with the sponge. I do not feel like a lot of product is soaking into the sponge. I do feel like it is blending out on the skin. Pretty light coverage at one pass. With the sponge, we are getting some cancellation of redness, but I can still see sunspots and things poking through. So far, very nice skin-like finish. Let's see what the brush side does. This blends out nicely with the brush as well. I feel like it looks a little bit more smooth with the sponge, so I would probably 
probably prefer the sponge, but if you're a brush kind of person, I think you'll be okay. Just make sure to not leave any brush strokes behind. Make sure you get everything blended out nicely. I'd say coverage is about the same on either side. So whatever your preference, go with that. Pretty light coverage. They say you can build it up. I still have a little bit of product left. So let's see if we can get just a little bit more coverage where I've got things like sunspots and a little extra redness. That built up very nicely and very smoothly. I feel like we're probably at a light medium coverage. I still see some sunspots and things poking through, a little bit of redness still on my nose, but if we take a look, I think I'm getting pretty nice coverage around my mouth. Nothing is really clinging or grabbing or caking. Same around my nostrils. In some spots you can kind of see it sitting on top of the skin just a smidge but one thing I feel is that my texture and my pores are very much blurred and smoothed and that's pretty much all the foundation because this hydrating primer does not do much in terms of smoothing even my nose looks pretty smooth the only place I'm having a little bit of trouble with it caking up is the texture between my eyebrows, but it doesn't seem to be catching on texture any place else. And in general, it looks, I would call this an exceptionally smooth look. I think it is a smidge too light for me. I will fix that with bronzer. This is probably my good winter shade, which means the shade Fair is pretty pale compared to me, which is good. For all the people on the fair end of the spectrum. So that is where we're starting out. Let's check the time. Checking time, we will call it 1130. I'm going to go put the rest of my face on. I'll be right back. So far, so good with the NYX Born to Glow. I think it does have a nice radiant finish. It's not too dewy. It's not too shiny. Yes, I did go a little bit ham with the highlighter today, but forehead, nose there, you know, everywhere there's not highlighter. I think it's just a nice natural finish. I did end up setting it with the CoverGirl True Blend Minerals, which I thoroughly enjoy this powder. It sets very nicely. It melts together in the skin. I did not use any setting spray. Everything kind of came together nicely. I had no trouble blending, no trouble with concealer under my eyes. If you missed Wednesday's video, it is the concealer that I am also testing today. The Cover FX Naturally Radiant Power Play. Yes, Power Play Concealer. And Naturally Radiant is in the foundation name, not the concealer name. But blending went fine. Everything went fine. I think it looks quite nice. I don't, maybe it's not too light for me. I don't know. We'll see how this looks outside. But so far, so good. On the rest of my face, like I said, I did set with the CoverGirl powder. I used the, actually I used all of this, the True Blend palette from CoverGirl. I just did a little bit of the highlighter toward the back because it's sort of a pink toned highlight and then went on the rest with the CoverGirl Super Stunner. This is in the shade Pearl Crush and it's a very glass-like, beautiful, blingy, blingy highlight. My eyes are the Anastasia Jackie Ana palette and what else? My lip is Milani Amori Shine in Charming. Mascara Exhibitionist from CoverGirl. Figured we would stick with the whole cruelty-free thing today. So that is where we're starting out. I will give you guys a daylight check-in in a little bit, and I will come back tonight and give you my final thoughts. Hello, we are about seven hours in, and this is the first time I am looking at my face all day. <laughs> Definitely... A nice radiant finish is the first thing I notice and I'm kind of liking how that looks color match is actually probably okay let's see a little wear off on my chin blush bronzer highlights still seem to be intact at this point at least from what I can see on the phone it looks like it's doing all right you guys I'm okay with this I'm okay with this so far, so good. I will be back tonight with my final thoughts. 11.21 p.m. Let's take a look at how the NYX 
Born to Glow held up. We are approaching the 12 hour mark. This one kind of conked out somewhere between nine and 10 hours, but let's talk about how it wore throughout the day. Very, very comfortable, very lightweight, very nicely hydrating. My skin feels wonderful right now. That's good. I have pretty dry skin that dehydrates very easily. I also want to comment on the way, the sort of, the radiant finish of this. Some dewy finish foundations look sweaty or greasy, and I don't like that look. This one kind of looks highlighty, and I like that. It's pretty glowy. I mean, ignore my highlight <laughs> because that's obviously glowy. But, you know, look at forehead, nose, chin. Like, it's a healthy, glowy look. It's not sweaty, gross, greasy. It's, I really like the finish on this very much. It's dewy in the most pretty way, in my opinion. That's what I like. Let's zoom in and take a look at how it has broken down. Basically, chin around my mouth and my nose have lost almost all of their coverage. It is bunching up and sort of caking up in those areas. I expected to have more trouble with the texture between my eyebrows. That does not seem to really be a problem. Blush bronzer highlights stayed intact very, very nicely. And I do also think that my pores and texture in those areas looks still blurred and smoothed, which is also very, very nice. I like that. I don't think it's really emphasizing anything I don't want it to. It's really not settled into lines. It doesn't look dry or separated along my smile lines. You know... It degraded pretty doggone gracefully, really. I mean, I you know, this area here basically has lost most of its coverage. But the rest of my face looks okay. <laughs> and for a 12-hour day, I think I'm okay with that from a radiant finish foundation. So if I had to give a grade to the NYX Born to Glow, lots of shades to choose from, vegan, cruelty-free, Sure, I would love if it lasted another three or four hours, but this is pretty good, you guys. This is pretty nice. Ooh, I think it's an A. I think I think we have an A on our hands because I can't even really ding it to bring it down to an A minus. I don't know what I would ding it on. It's pretty nice. It's pretty doggone nice. We're probably talking like a 95 A right now. I like it. I like it. I probably wouldn't have bought this one, but so many of you guys requested that I review it, that I grabbed it, because why not? It's inexpensive. 12-month expiration, I just noticed on here. Yeah. Winner. Winner, winner, tofu dinner. Happy, 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 happy. Go get you some. It's a good one. We're going to go A on the next Born to Glow. There you have it. Another Friday foundation fix is in the books. Let me know in the comments down below what foundations you would like me to check out. Go to my website, geekoutofwater.com. Click the Foundation Fest link. I have a ranked, sortable, searchable spreadsheet of all of the foundations I have ever reviewed, of which there are more than 130 of them at this point. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for new videos. I appreciate your time, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.